Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Cedric, and I'm a software engineer at Expo. Um, today, I want to talk a bit about debugging. Now, why do I want to talk a bit about debugging? Well, you guys rightfully so complained about the biggest pain points in the React Native survey of 2022, I believe. Um, you all voice your opinions about upgrading being really, really tough. Now, luckily for you, we already fixed that, kind of, with config plugin and pre-build. The number two biggest pain points turned out to be debugging. So let's take a look why. Uh, and before we're going to dive into some debugging stuff, let's talk about an app. So this is my really, really simple to-do app. It basically keeps track of all my tasks that I still need to do at Expo. Um, it's powered by a super simple flat list. So it loads all the to-dos that I have loaded in the app. It renders every, every item in a to-do card. And that's pretty much it. Um, the data is coming from a prefetched API call, where we just use it in a hook and then pass it on to the flat list. Now, this is great in terms of si simplicity. What it doesn't do great is if you're like me and keep adding new to-do items to your, to your app, it will push out all the existing items to the bottom and out of view. So you know what they say about that, right? Out of sight, out of mind. So let's try to flip that. So instead of creating new to-dos on the top, we're creating a new to-do on the bottom. Now, for that, we, of course, need to change the result from the API to flip it. Um, but we also need to change the flat list a bit. And there are some ways you can implement this. Uh, let's go for the more adventurous approach. So in here, we've added a new list ref to programmatically control the flat list. It's fairly simple. I mean, most of you should already know this. But if you don't, go to the docs. Um, and then whenever the screen is opened, uh, we just scroll the whole flat list to the bottom, meaning that whenever you open the screen, you will get confronted with everything you still need to do. Great for me. Unfortunately, when making this feature, um, our app is crashing. So we just introduced a bug, and we have no idea yet where to begin. But let's debug this together. So luckily for you, even though re the debugging part was one of the biggest failures in React Native, you still have some ways to actually debug. Um, let's start with the first one, the OG debug remote JS. So with this function that you can enable in the dev menu in your app, you will open the browser. And what this does is basically moving all the J JavaScript execution to your browser. Now, the concept is great, because you can reuse whatever development tools you have in your Chrome or in any browser, but the, but the implementation lacks a bit. Um, if you're working on anything related to network and you have a network race condition, you change the environment that much by moving from a mobile internet connection to a stable cabled internet connection. So you probably won't be able to trace that bug. And of course, with Hermes being the default, we can just move the whole JS execution context to another thing on your network. So we have to keep that synchronously. So this is not going to be an option for us. What's next? Well, luckily, like, we're kind of making an app, right? So we have tools like Xcode or Ender Studio, and they are super great in giving us insights in things like the native layer. Um, in here, we can basically visualize all the layers that we're rendering in our app. And you cannot get this anywhere else except Xcode or, or Android Studio. Fortunately, there are some things that it doesn't do great. For example, our issue probably lies within the JavaScript context. And it just gives us a really, really big blob of stack traces. Now, we're not a computer, so we don't really want to read through all of that. So it's not, not a perfect tool for our use case. Now, moving on, what is left? Well, tools like Flipper can give you very good insights into various aspects of your app, including the React Dev tools, all the way to the network inspector, but also the logs. Unfortunately, it's pretty much the same thing as Xcode, except it's colored red now, as you can see. Um, 
So it's, it's also not a perfect tool for us. So that wasn't great. There are a couple of things that kind of work, but they were not really great for our use case. So the debug chess remotely didn't even work for us. Native tooling is great, but not for our use case. And then there is this thing, Flipper. Um, and everybody has its own experience with Flipper, and I don't want to talk a bit too much about that, but if you want to have an overview of why their Flipper isn't super great in most of the things, um, I encourage you to engage in the React Native Discussions and Proposal 641, which was released by uh, a previous speaker, Alex Hunt. Um, and I would encourage you to read it and engage in it, because we need your input. So is that it? Is that everything we can do in React Native? Well, let's take a step back. And instead of basically looking into the React Native side, let's see how people in the React community, community are debugging. So in other words, let's take a look at web debugging. debugging. With web, you can go to any website. You can right click on pretty much any page or area in the page, and you can select the inspector. This will open up the inspector, which is a wild tool that has a lot of functionality at your disposal, all the way from executing small snippets in the console to the network inspector. You can even benchmark a few things like profiler or just try and view the source. Now, this is great, and this is a very mature tool. Uh, it, it also just doesn't work in one browser. It actually works in all of them. Uh, not even browsers, even, even tools like Node.js, or you can even replace the inspector with other specific tooling like uh, VS Code. So this all works together in something I would like to call the inspector protocol. There are various names on the internet, so it's not the exact name, but it's a great summarization. And how can we find a way to leverage that, actually, into the React Native world. And for that, we need to take a closer look at the Node.js. They actually implemented the inspector through the inspector flag. Um, and luckily for us, the Hermes theme is actually already incrementally adopting it. And more features will be added later on, as Alex Hunt also mentioned. Now, how do we use that right now in React Native? In order to do, to do so, you can go to any inspect, inspect page in your browser. Then you will need to point that to your local Metro instance. So in here, I just type localhost on port 8081. That will allow us to inspect the target. Then if you connect your app, it, new inspector targets will pop up. Each of one of them will be inspectable and will result in the inspector. Now, this is actually connected not just to your computer. This is directly connected to your app instead. So there will be no delay, and it, there will be no differences in a test environment. It's literally a perfect tool to try out. Unfortunately, we are still missing a couple of very, very important features, such as the network inspector. They are not here. So at Expo, we basically started thinking, what could we do to help that? Well, with Expo, you can start any web, any, any project with the Expo start command. And I'm showing the dev client here, because right now, we only support this with the dev client. But once you open it and Metro starts, you will get options like open debugger. Now, this is something interesting, because once you connect your app to it, you will actually get access to the debugger by just pressing J. Now, this does seem exactly like the same as we just saw. So let's take a look. Once we open the inspector, we have, again, our very poorly stack trace with a lot of logging, which we don't want to read. But we also have some more tools here. So in here, I'm trying to catch the exception that is being thrown in our app. Now, because Expo Router automatically catches pretty much any exception in the page, we need to enable pause on call exception. Once we re-trigger that exception, we have our call stack, which is fully interactable, on the right. So in here, I'm just clicking through some of the call stacks, and I figured out that's the exception source. So 
what should we do next? Well, we don't really want to inspect after the error occurred. We want to inspect just before that. Let's add a breakpoint and basically re-trigger the whole system and see what's going on. So once I add a breakpoint and once I basically re-trigger the issue, we will get something like this. In here, we can see some things already, but in here on the right, we can have full access to the scope. This scope is literally the current state of your app with all the variables in there. So let's try to inspect them. Of course, you can check the, the current list ref, but also we can check a few other things, like what are the current to-do list items. And as you can see, there's something weird going on. I always have things to do, but here we can see that the to-dos array is literally empty. So that's probably related to some SQL query where we changed the order just now. Now, I will fix that later. Let's focus first on the exception. So before we want to fix it, we first have to confirm that this is likely the issue. So in here, I can go to the console. I can basically type whatever I want, and I can also invoke the function. Now, when I invoke this function, it should actually try, it should actually show the exception right there. And as you can see, it's there. And since it's related to the range index, we can validate that it's probably the to-do list items. But first, again, let's fix this exception. Now, going back to the code, uh, we can make a few modifications, basically this, where we just don't scroll to end whenever there are no to-dos. This will avoid the exception. It's not the best fix, but at least it, it, will, it won't crash the app. Now, adding that, will get us back to a non-crashing app. But we're still missing all my to-dos, so I still have no use for this app until that's fixed. So let's open the network, let's open the debugger again. In here, we can go to the network tab, and we can actually inspect the all, all requests and responses going on within your app. Now, as you can see, it's literally empty, so let me fix that real quick. Now, by just reloading the app, we can see that the request is happening again, and we can see some more data over here. In here, you can pretty much inspect any request, preview the responses, check the headers, do whatever you need to, even double click to execute the request again, but in your browser. Um, so it's, it's pretty useful, it's pretty helpful. Now, just like that, we can actually fix our whole app and get back to a working state. Just by pressing J, going through the debugger, and just going step by step through the whole process. Now, what we just did was inspecting the, or debugging the, the code, but we also had to switch to the actual code editor itself. Wouldn't it be fun if we could like debug while we're coding so you don't have to switch anymore? Introducing VS Code Expo version one, the first stable version. <laughs> Wait for it. The first stable version where we can actually go through the call stack, which is fully unsource mapified, or however you want to call it. In here, you can actually see the exact references from the actual source code that is not bundled. I mean, it is bundled but it's also translated back to the real, real, real files. Going further, you can actually like, add the breakpoints directly in your editor, and even at the top, you can control what breakpoints should execute next. Now, even besides that, you even have access to the, console, the debug console, which allows you to execute the code directly in your phone while the app is frozen. All of this makes it very easy to actually debug in your editor. Now, when can you actually use this? You can use this with the latest Expo SDK 48 right now. It's highly experimental, but it is possible. So if you want to try it, you have to use the latest Expo Dev Client. Uh, you have to use the Expo build properties. Then you have to opt in on a native site to use the actual inspector. You can do that by using the unstable network inspector flag. After that, you can rebuild your app and use another feature flag, which is Expo use custom inspector proxy, 
to enable the network inspector. Now, this is our great. Um, the SDK 49 dev clients will have this enabled by default out of the box. And there are some fun things with this as well. Because we have, we have adopted a wild, a wild mature system of debugging tools, we, could, we actually have a lot of things for free, such as enhanced logging, where we could style our logs with CSS. We can use console.table or even console.group, console.time, and so much more. So finally, at Expo, we believe that debugging should now be easier with all these changes. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you want to talk a, a bit more about debugging or to get updates or about that. Find me around here or even Blue Sky. Thanks.